Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today I'm going to show you how you could use one of these things, an LED, to test the leakage of one of these things, a capacitor. So what I'm going to do is use the capability of a indium gallium nitride LED to show very small leakage current. You see, indium gallium nitride LEDs can light with extremely low current. You know, only a few microamps. Matter of fact, even less than one microamp could make a indium gallium nitride LED glow. And if you use a high quality LED, uh, usually the green type, not the lime green, but the indium gallium nitride green ones, uh, they are the most visible ones. So that's what I have set up here. So let me focus that a little bit. And I'll show you the circuit I have set up. So right here is the basic circuit. Well, before you build the circuit, well, I guess you could go ahead and build the circuit, but you need to qualify the actual LED before you can use the circuit. So let me explain what's happening here. Well, you have a supply voltage, and with the circuit you could go up to 50 volts. And when you do that, you just have to be mindful of the maximum voltage of the capacitor you're using. For example, if you're testing a, a capacitor that's rated 16 volts, you want to uh, make sure you drop this down the supply voltage down so you're not exceeding that 16 volts. So yeah this point here is where you connect the capacitor across to test. This is a current limiting resistor for the LED. So when you connect a capacitor across here that's discharged all of a sudden heavy current will flow and you don't want to damage this LED. So you limit the current and of course this is the LED. Now this diode connected across the LED in anti-parallel is just protection. Uh, for example, let's say you hook up a capacitor and it has a charge on it and it reverse biases this LED. Well, you're not really supposed to put much of a voltage in reverse bias. Normally up to 5 volts you know, they usually will take somewhat more, but after a certain point you can actually damage the LED. So that just conducts the current around the LED in reverse bias and also protects against static electricity since indium gallium nitride LEDs are somewhat um, sensitive to static electricity. Okay, so like I say, you have to pre-qualify the LED to use. You want to make sure that the LED does indeed glow at very low currents because some of them don't. If they're not a good quality one or there's some uh, damage to the uh, structure of the dye, it may not glow until it reaches several microamps and it would disqualify its use in the circuit. Okay, to test your LED or qualify it for the circuit, you want to uh, use about 5 volts here and then put a 1 mega ohm resistor across this uh, testing junction and the LED should glow and you know for now I just have a 9 volt uh, battery connected across and it's clearly glowing I've already tested this to glow at very low currents and you can see clearly that the LED is glowing I'm going to turn it off Turn it on. And uh, if I didn't mention before, you should use green. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did mention to use the indium gallium nitride green colors because they're the most visible at low currents. Okay, I have a couple capacitors to test. First is a 1 microfarad uh, polyester film and a, another of the same value, 1 microfarad but this one is a electrolytic and we can see how they respond under the tester. 
So let me uh, get this here so you can see it. And pay attention to the LED when I plug the capacitor into the tester, which I just set up on the breadboard. And is this on? I'll turn it on. Ah, oh, there you go. See it charged up. The LED is completely out. There is no conduction whatsoever. So, of course, this capacitor doesn't show any sort of leakage. Now, let's try the electrolytic. Oops, wrong one. Where did you go? Ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, so uh, let's try this one microfarad electrolytic. Now, watch carefully. It will respond differently, so I'll plug it in. Okay, it's plugged in, but it, it glows longer. Notice that? It's just about out now. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's pretty much out now. But it did glow longer. But... That is okay still. In fact, some capacitors might glow even slightly longer, even though they're the same value. The reason you see that with electrolytic capacitors is because of what's known as dielectric absorption. They have a much more amount of that as compared to uh, like a film capacitor. They all have it to some degree though. You can think of this as a capacitor here, this whole circuit. This is the main capacitor, and these are the, what I'm calling the dielectric absorption part of the circuit. You can think of them as smaller capacitors in series with a high value resistor. So these will accept current longer because these have to charge up. If you want to read about dielectric absorption, it has to do with the uh, dielectric material and, you know, the electrons and the molecules and things like that. It's more technical and kind of beyond the scope that I wanted to get into here. Okay, I'll show you another capacitor here. It's also a 1 microfarad electrolytic. And I don't know how it's going to respond. This one's been sitting around. It's an older one. I just wonder if it will show any reform uh, current going through it. It's kind of hard to do this through the viewfinder to see what I'm doing. There it goes. Yeah, this guy, it's getting dimmer, but it's, see how long it's taking? This capacitor probably needs some reforming. And it's probably doing that here, just in the tester. Though you'd want to use a voltage closer to its maximum to properly reform it. But yeah, it's still glowing. So that just shows you a leaky capacitor that, in this case, is probably okay, just needs reformed. Okay, some closing remarks about the circuit. I put a large... 330 microfarad cap in there and uh, these are old as well they probably need reformed but they will take a while to charge this circuit's probably better to use with capacitors under I don't know 10 microfarads or so you could use larger ones if you want to wait for them to charge up see this one is uh, charging up probably some a lot of absorption going on there now this is just something to throw together on a breadboard. You know, it's not a spectacular circuit by any means, but it, you know, if current's going to pass that LED, it's going to light it up, so it will show leaky capacitors. I got the idea from watching another channel. Um, I think it's called Mr. Carlson's Lab. He built a really nice capacitor checker. Now, if you're into repairing electronics, you know, it's something you do very often. He made a very nice circuit there. I would certainly recommend building that. However, if you're like me and you, you know, I don't really test old capacitors. I'm more into building new things so I have newer components. Um, maybe rarely I get something in to test that's old. 
So just throwing a little circuit together like this is good enough for me. So I guess that about wraps it up for the poor man's capacitor tester just using an LED. Thanks for watching.